17. Here's a vector and it wants a unit vector parallel to it. Well, that simply means however vector u goes, I'll just make it go this way anyway, a unit vector parallel means it goes the same way, but its length is just 1. So I'll just use this one, but to reduce its length to 1. Find the length of this and then divide by it. Well, to get the length of a vector, you just use Pythagoras and the three components. So I've got negative 3 squared, 0 squared, and the 4 squared. 9 and 16, which is 25, which means the length of that vector is 5. So if I want a unit vector, it will be one-fifth of that. One-fifth of negative 3, O, 4. Now which form will I write that in? It doesn't actually want it expressed in component forms. It wants it as a combination of the unit basis vectors, i, j, and k. Well, that means I would say I've got negative 3 fifths for the x component, so it's negative 3 fifths of i, nothing for the y component, 1 fifth of 4, so that's plus 4 fifths of the z component, which is 4 fifths of k. And that particular one gives me the answer negative 3 fifths plus 4 fifths, which is a. Number 18. Given this function, which is a function of a function, so you'll be thinking chain rule, but you should really think function of a function. There's an inner function and there's something outside happening to it. Find the second, find the derivative. Well, what have we got? If that had simply said x to the negative a half, that would be a straightforward function, just power negative a half. Then you would have done multiply by the power, take one off the power, one off of negative a half means taking away another one, which is another two halves, which is negative three up and two. But if it simply was an x inside, when you look at the inner function, in there was lurking a four minus three x squared. So you then multiply by the derivative of the inner function, and the derivative of that is going to be, well, that part zero, but this will be negative, multiply by the power, so times negative six x, that power drops to one. So altogether you've got, taking this product, negative a half times negative 6x makes 3x times 4 minus 3x squared to the power negative 3 upon 2, which is answer D. Number 19. Solving this quadratic inequation. Now, with quadratic inequations, you have to be careful. Don't factorise it and then assume that each of the factors independently will be less than zero, because that won't be true. You could have two negative factors, but multiply them together, they're going to give an answer greater than zero. No, if you've got a quadratic or any other non-linear, anything else with a power in it, inequation, consider the graph. The graph of this would look something like... Since I've got a negative term, it's going to be upside down. Opposite signs, passes to the right, but upside down. So the inequation means when do you get negative answers? Well, here's all the negative answers popping down here. It doesn't include zero. So that means I'd have x's below a certain value here and above a certain value there. And those are the values, yes, you find by factorising. That's as far as the factorising takes you, just to find those particular zeros. However, I don't like this one with the negatives. I could factorise that around, but I'd rather not. I'm going to multiply it all by negative 1. So that means all the signs will flip over. So it'll be x squared minus the x minus the 6, but greater than 0. It'll be an equivalent in equation. It simply means instead of looking like this, I'm going to be considering this equation, just because I prefer factorising this one. So it'll be x times x, it must be 2 times 3, the negative must go to the greater, and that says they're opposite. So what I get are two zeros, one at negative 2 and one at 3. But the way I've drawn this is with a positive. This graph looks this way round, and I want the answers which are greater than 0, see so the immediate equivalence, not including the zeros, so those are the parts that I want. I want x to be greater than 3, and I want x to be less than negative 2. You can combine it into a single statement if you like, or that might do just on its own for selecting from the answers. So x is greater than 3, x is less than negative 2, that was c, and they in fact just left them separate. Number 20. 
Number 20, the last one then in this 2009 higher exam. What's the rate of change of this when R is 2? Rate of change of A with respect to R. Well, that's an easy question for the last one. Just don't let these A's and R's and Pi's put you off. It's just like Y equals so many X. Rate of change, that's the derivative. dA by dR, the rate of change of A with respect to R, meaning R's your variable. No matter what you see there, R's your variable. Anything else isn't. It just acts like a number. So as far as R's concerned, its power is 2 multiply. I'll have 4 pi. Take 1 off, it'll just be 1. R's your variable, so if it's a linear term, it'll just be whatever's in front of it, because that'll be its coefficient. So that's just 6 pi. And if R equals 2, then my rate of change specifically at that value of R would be 4 pi times 2, as R is 2, plus 6 pi. You can see straight away 8 pi and 6 is 14. I'll put it down. That's 8 pi and 6 pi, which is 14 pi. So which one is that then? That would be C. And there you go.